Welcome to another session in the 2021 Online Student Development Conference. I'm Marie Hethakom, your host and chair of the council. With me today is Cesar Muhammani, who is a Mozambican archaeologist who graduated from the Eduardo Monlan University in Maputo in 2014. From that year onward, he has been specializing in maritime and underwater archaeology and participated in different trainings um, in underwater archaeology in the Biscayan National Park in USA, uh, in Mombasa, Kenya, and in Cape Town, South Africa. So these training opportunities allowed him to join the Department of Anthropology and Archaeology at Eduardo Mondlane University, where he is based at the moment. So Cesar has been involved in some projects relating to the slave trade, researching the history of slave trade in Mozambique and worldwide from a shipwreck perspective. He is a member of the Ambassador's Grant, which is monitoring endangered shipwrecks at Mozambique Island and raising public awareness about the importance of maritime and underwater heritage. The digital innovation in public access to Mozambican maritime heritage project is aimed at producing materials for the visualization of submerged heritage and the biocultural heritage of Mozambique, researching different issues of heritage by the community. Cesar is now a master's candidate at the University of Cape Town, and his project is devoted to developing, monitoring, and stabilizing methodologies for endangered wooden shipwrecks at Mozambique Island. Uh, so Cesar, thank you very much for joining us today. And without further ado, let me hand over to you. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, everyone, for having me, having me in this this section um, and I have some my my presentation to share with all of you uh, so we can discuss and show how it's the maritime archaeology done in Mozambique and at which stage we are so far. So um, I think I'm going to share my screen from now and start my, my presentation. Mm. Okay. I think it is it is visible. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to start talking about the underwater cultural heritage in Mozambique, current research, potential opportunity, and uh, management challenges that we have. So the Mozambican uh, coast is integrated in the Indian Ocean. So this region has been uh, involved in um, commercial trade since the first millennium. Most of activities have been conducted, trade activity have been conducted along this, this coast uh, from Somalia and uh, the, the ancient port Ras Hafun to down to uh, what is today called as Shibweni or at Inyambani province. All this area has produced a lot of artifacts, a lot uh, of shipwrecks, um, memories, buildings, and a lot of ports that are standing today and have been used as um, heritage to, to show how these people connected for centuries. Um, so further, south at Mozambique, uh, there is this place called Shibuen that have been located um, in the 80s. So Shibuen was a, a sort of harbor in the first millennium that was being used to trade different uh, sort of um, goods coming from Asia, coming from Persia and different um, locations in the, in the Middle East. These goods were being transitioned to down south, south or down to Mozambique, and they were imported into the interior to um, places like um, Manikeni and uh, Great Zimbabwe in the interior. So Shibuene was used as one of the main harbor. And one of the evidence that we have so far is this Sassanid bowl that was dated between 8th and 9th century uh, BC. So all of these heritage were created along the Mozambican coast. Unfortunately, they were not uh, conducted any underwater research in this area to locate 
uh, evidence of any shipwrecks or something like that. But um, I'm sure that within this area of Inyambani, at Inyambani Bay, there might be something related to the trade that happened during this period. Another area that was really important in the Mozambican coast, which is located in the northern of Mozambique, which is the Mozambique Island. Mozambique Island is located in Nampula province, and it is very, very small island. It only has three kilometers by 200 and, or 500 meters. But the kind of um, trade that we carried out there today shows a lot, a lot of, of um, material that uh, witnessed the commerce activity that was happening in this island. So during the colonial period, there were some uh, artifacts that were located. An example is this anchor, which was uh, mentioned as being an Arabic anchor. Uh, and also recently we found a stone anchor uh, underwater. So these two materials, they are, are used so far to show that the Mozambique island was a place that played a major role during the, the, the ancient trade, even between, before the arrival of the, of the Portuguese. So the location of these um, materials were first undertaken in 1960s by the Portuguese government. Um, a first expedition we carried out in Mozambique Island to try to locate evidences of this uh, shipwrecks that were around around the island. As we can see in this, um, let me do something. Yes, as we can see in this in this picture, there is this guy who is Kirin da Fonseca, who was the one of the first um, guys to under, to do research in underwater archaeology in Mozambique, but during the, the 60s. So Kirin da Fonseca was able to identify three main areas, areas in Mozambique Island has here shown in the map, the area A, B, and C. And he declared that these three areas were the most potential where shipwrecks could be, could be located. Unfortunately, Kirin da Fonseca didn't carry out this sort of research uh, because Mozambique started an uh, independence war and all the research has, has stopped. However, later on uh, in the 90s, the Department of Archaeology and Anthropology here at the Department at uh, Eduardo Mondlane University was based. And this, this department was now responsible to undertake some research at Mozambique Island. The result is that in 1990s, the Department of Archaeology and Anthropology, they undertook some research and they located evidence of some uh, shipwrecks around Mozambique Island. In 1990, they started a huge program to record all the shipwrecks, to document the shipwrecks, and um, a big project was to be to be started in that year. But unfortunately, in the same year, in 1990s, the Mozambican government um, made a, a contract with the treasure hunter company. So from there, the scientific research was stopped. Um, the scientific research was stopped and a lot has been, was lost. So this treasure hunter company was working mainly in Mozambique Island and has shown here in this map, more than 24 shipwrecks were located. Most of them um, were concentrated here in front of the, what is the, the fortress today. This treasure hunter company located all of these shipwrecks, but they only they excavated some from where they collected a lot of um, material. Most of them were were sold, but they only succeeded to excavate um, completely in the island two shipwrecks. One of them was called the IDM002, also known as the the Saint Sebastian shipwreck, from where they located a collection of unique porcelain. Unfortunately, this mink porcelain was sold, so today we have no clue where these collections are. Another wreck they excavated is the Nossa Senhora da Consolação, which the images I'm, I'm sharing here. These are the image of the excavation that we carried out in this wreck and the sort of material that they, they found there. So a lot of destruction were made by this company and a lot of heritage was lost because uh, Collection was spread, 
most of them were sold. Um, shipwrecks or the, these sites were destroyed because this treasure hunting company were only looking for objects that they could, they could sell. Fortunately, this initiative was ended, this contract with the treasure hunters was ended in 2014 by the Mozambican government because a lot of professionals in Mozambique and internationally, they were pressuring the government to put an end to this contract. Therefore, after the, the, the cancellation of the contract, um, a lot of activity was started to be done in, in Mozambique Island. So they carried out an assessment on these two wrecks, the San Sebastian uh, that I'm showing here, to show some level of, of destructions that were done by this treasure hunter company in, this, in these wrecks. Um, this is also the IDM, um, the Nossa Senhora da, da Consolação, uh, which is also shows an image of the site that was destroyed by the, the treasure hunter company. We can see here canyons that were exposed. And it's also important to say that these canyons, they were buried under sediments and more than three meters of, of sediments that were, were, were excavated. And nowadays, these these canyons are exposed and are getting uh, deteriorated on the water as well as the wooden hull that was exposed, um, but it's also being um, deteriorated. So in 2016, as the, the contract with the treasure hunters was finished, the Department of Archaeology and Anthropology started to do archaeological work in Mozambique Island, but also to, start to try to mitigate the situation in these wrecks. Um, so what we did here was, among all the sites that have been located by the treasure hunter company, we aimed to do an assessment in those sites that have been excavated and to assess the level of conditions that they were. So what we did is we were recorded the sites. Uh, we did an assessment to get an idea of what is still there on the site and what it still have um, importance in terms of the archaeological point of, of view. So we carried out mapping of the site. We did photogrammetry of the site. Uh, we also started to engage the community to get involved in this, in this sort of, uh, of activities. So this is just some examples of some of the sites that we, we recorded. Uh, like a way to to assess the condition of the site until 2016 when we started this the all of these activities at the at Mozambique Island. So here is one of the wreck which I'm I'm particularly looking at now for my for my masters, and the the other the other wrecks here that we we produced a sort of rough mapping of the conditions and an assessment on how the material are spread on the site and the level of of conservation that they, they show today. So the cancellation of that uh, contract with the treasure hunter opened up a lot of opportunity in Mozambique Island to study the underwater cultural heritage. So we are now able to develop archaeological based research. And um, what I'm doing now for, for my masters is that I'm starting in fully uh, a shipwreck that have been excavated by those treasure hunters, but look by looking at the wreck, the an analysis of the material that have been collected by them, because some were left in in Mozambique Island. Um, we are now giving an interpretation to those materials. Uh, we are developing in situ protection mechanism for all of those wooden shipwrecks that are spread along the, uh, around the island and uh, in danger. We are training local community and also international archeologists in underwater in underwater archeology. We have had in the past, um, some people coming from different places, even in Africa, in Brazil, in, uh, in America to come in Mozambique Island and train, be trained in underwater archeology span because the condition at the island is, it's unique. Uh, we're also trying now to develop a sort of touristic and economic industry based on, on underwater cultural heritage and also develop uh, other sort of institutions such as museums and 
a center which could be used uh, as a place where uh, research can be can be conducted. So this is um, an example of the archaeological um, work that I'm, I'm doing now. This is a shipwreck that sunk in this area. It is called the Nossa Senhora da Consolação, which was excavated by the Treasure Hunter Company between 2004 and They recovered a lot of material. As you can see here, they collected a lot of lead ingots. More than 105 lead ingots were collected from there, but unfortunately, they were all sold. Uh, however, at Mozambique Island, this company left some of these materials, as we can see here, uh, these olive jars, matoban jars. This is a part which illustrated the Lumbo tradition, which is a lo local tradition. Uh, hippopotamus and elephant tusks, ivory, um, some uh, seals that we used to certify the quality of products in Mozambique Island coins. So. Right now, I'm looking into all of this collection and try to reinterpret this material because this work were not done by those who excavated the site. So what I'm doing now is looking at this material and trying to reinterpret the, the same material and also the history of the wreck. This wreck has an interesting history, as most of them has, because it sank in... 1608 in Mozambique Island after the Dutch tried to occupy the island. So the Dutch managed to capture this, um, this ship, but they were unable to, to push uh, the ship out from the, from the harbor because Mozambique Island uh, has a lot of, of shoals. So the ship, while we're being pushed by the, the Dutch, it gets stuck in, in one of the shoals. So the Portuguese, they didn't want to lose that ship. So the commander in that time, he ordered that some soldiers should go there and set the ship on fire and causing it, it wreckage. So this was what happened. Some soldiers were sent there, they put, they set fire uh, on, on the ship and the ship sank on the near Mozambique, Mozambique Island. So the research that I'm also conducting there is looking into the, the artifacts that have been collected, but also doing an assessment on the environment in, in a way to try to understand how the environment is uh, causing the degradation of the site, the deterioration of the site. So I did some uh, environmental analysis on some samples and I had these devices that helped me to get an idea of how the conditions are within the, the uh, underwater where the site, where the rack is, is located. I also collected some samples of wood to analyze two things. First, the type of wood which, which this wreck was made of, and also to try to see what is the level of the degradation this wood is, is facing. After we have um, done this research, we tried to develop um, an experimental um, protection system using geotextile to cover the wreck and try to reduce the level of degradation of the wood of this, this shipwreck. Um, we also saw some threats because here, Mozambique Island, the community, most of them are fishermen. So some of the nets that they used, they were getting stuck in some of the wood that are underwater. So we had to clean the site and also try to uh, build an awareness on the community about the need to develop a sort of um, fishing activities that cannot damage at all the, the underwater heritage in, in Mozambique. Um, we're also developing uh, underwater cultural heritage. We, there is a center that was built in, in Mozambique Island. So this center was built essentially for Joho get all the collections there to prepare all the archaeological work. And we are training some of the, of the communities in the island so that they can be the first eyes in the Mozambique island to take care of the, of the heritage. Because of the importance of this area and the amount of rats that are located near the, the island, in 2019, Mozambique island hosted a UNESCO training 
where different uh, youth from the African region, countries, they were trained in the Mozambique Island. They were diving in this, some of these wrecks and doing exercises uh, underwater, recording sites, uh, developing management plans for, for those sites. So a sort of exercise that helps to build capacity and also to get a sense of the importance of the heritage within Mozambique Island. We're also trying to develop a perspective of maritime museums. This is a museum that is located there in Mozambique Island, but most of the stuff that are being displayed there, they are uh, related to the colonial. We don't show um, local activities or local history. Most of the things that are exhibited here, exhibited here, they are related to, to, to the colonial government. And as you can see here, it's forbidden to take pictures from the exhibitions inside. While this is the, the center, this center has a small exhibitions and in this exhibition, we show materials that have been excavated in the island, material that were excavated in the areas near Mozambique Island that show local, local material, potteries and other stuff that were being used in the past for different activities within the, the Eastern African coast. In terms of uh, management activities, well, uh, in Mozambique, um, research and management of archaeological heritage has only been successful uh, when being built through the collaboration and integration of local community and le legal institutions. So that's why the activities that we are conducting there, they always involve the local communities and also the organizations that are there because we believe that combining these two um, institutions, either legal institution or the local communities, these two entities, it is possible to develop a, a well-balanced management system in, in the island. Um, some of these, um, the, the, the management is based on the, 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 the idea of the traditional system of custodianship in which communities are responsible for taking care of the heritage. Most of the time we as archeology, span we are not always on the field. We're not always keeping our eyes on the heritage, but the community, they are always there. They live with, the, with the, that heritage every day. So they are the first eyes in the, in the heritage. They are the first one to protect the heritage. That's why we think it is important to, to train them in order to take care of this, of this heritage. And we also have um, legal tools like laws, uh, which allows her, allow us to take care of, of the heritage. Um, that's why the both uh, entities are involved in, in, in the management of the underwater cultural heritage in, in Mozambique Island. Um, regarding the public awareness, people in the community are being trained in the basic elements of, of archaeology and also they are integrated in the, in the research teams because we believe that the community will be the first one to take, to take care of their, of their heritage. Um, some people that have received this, this training, um, they, by their own, they um, talk about what they learn about the importance of the heritage to the community itself. So we have people from the community teaching other uh, teaching the, the community itself. So uh, these people were trained and here they were um, sharing the knowledge that they gained during these trainings. And we also shared different uh, ideas concerning how this heritage can be, can be protected. However, even with all of these that have been done so far, there's still a lot, a lot of, of challenges in, in Mozambique, such as the documentation. Uh, we have conducted a lot of magnetometer work within Mozambique Island and we've been located. They need to be documented, they need to be um, built an inventory of all this wreck, an inventory that can be used locally, international, and in a national level. Um, we also have challenging conservation of shipwrecks and artifacts. 
the conservation of material coming from underwater is very challenging and a difficult process, which requires facilities, which requires equipment. So we still have this challenge in Mozambique to build uh, a conservation center from where we can uh, conserve all the archaeological material that come from uh, underwater. Also controlling access to archaeological site. Unfortunately, our coast, the protection of our coast is not as strong as we wish it would be. In this sense, we don't really have a control of what is happening on, on the whole coast. So treasure hunting may be happening, but in, in small scale, people would go to wrecks and collect uh, souvenirs to keep or to their own, or even destroying sheep tracks. So we still have this challenge in controlling the, the our um, in controlling access to archaeological sites. We also need to develop a regional scientific center on underwater archaeology, mainly in Mozambique Island, because we believe that this island it has a unique scenario, a unique concentration of tree shipwrecks along the, the, the region, and also most of these wrecks they are located really near. I mean, they are not deep sites. Most of them, they are shallow shallow sites and really easy to, to get access. That's why we believe that within the region, Mozambique Island is one of the places where um, we can use to train people and also to build this um, center that can have a regional uh, importance. Mozambique also has um, a challenge to ratify the UNESCO Convention, the 2001 UNESCO Convention on the Protection of Underwater Cultural Heritage. Because we believe that this is a really important document. It's a really important convention, which will help us to better protect the underwater cultural heritage and also better develop uh, partnerships with other, other signet countries that have, has already signed the, the convention. And we also have a challenge to classify the underwater cultural heritage. Underwater cultural heritage has world in, into the World Heritage List because the Mozambique Island has been classified as a World Heritage Site, but only the, the island itself. It doesn't include the underwater heritage. So we still have this challenge to include the underwater um, heritage sites into this, into this list. So having said this, uh, I, should, I wanted to say thank you to all these, these organizations, national and international organization that made all of these programs that we are carrying out in Mozambique to protect. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you very much, Cesar, for your, for your presentation. Um, I have quite a few questions and, and quite a few comments as well, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and limit them. Otherwise, we're going we're gonna to be here for the whole day. Yeah. Uh, so my, my first question to you is you mentioned that, you know, con access control to these underwater sites is an issue. It's, it's difficult to limit access to the sites. Um, and that, you know, small scale treasure hunting is bound to happen because, like you said, some of the sites are in shallow waters, so they're quite easily accessible. So mm -hmm. my question is, um, do you think there is a possibility for underwater archaeological tourism in terms of guided um, underwater, you know, tours to archaeological sites to, you know, through education? You know, to enlighten people why you shouldn't go treasure hunting, why you shouldn't disturb these sites. And um, perhaps then through a means of archaeological tourism and education, you know, um, convince people why um, the heritage is important and why it should be preserved. Yes, um, there is this, this possibility. And one of the things that we are trying to do in Mozambique Island, where we are doing most of, the, of our, our research, it's calling to attention to people to avoid doing collecting things on underwater and also training by training the community we're trying to educate them that there is a need to protect this this site and uh tourism for in underwater is also a potential in 
not only Mozambique side, Mozambique island, because that island is really beautiful. Even on land or underwater, the scenario there is fantastic. So it's something that is it's doable. We, there's a, a room to develop um, uh, underwater tourism there. And even the sites, they are so close to each other that you can have uh, trails, like you can dive from one site into another in the same, in the same, uh, in the same dive, that is possible. So it's something that we are trying to, to set in, in Mozambique Island, but it needs, it, need, it needs time, it needs people to be trained, it needs to raise um, awareness on people about the importance of you know, this heritage. So it's something that we, we are trying to do now in, in Mozambique, in Mozambique Island, because it's where we are doing most of, of our, our work. Yeah. It's interesting for me to note also what you said that in terms of Mozambique Island being classified as a, as a World Heritage Site, but not the surrounding yes. surrounding waters. That's a quite yes. <laughs> interesting point. And, and is there any way of actually convincing, you know, the powers that be that 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 maritime history is in the water as well? It's not just the island. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is sort of effort that we are we are doing because you know there were treasure hunters in Mozambique Island for quite a long, long time, almost fourteen years that they were there. So their the underwater heritage was regarded as something to be sold only. Um, but we are trying to change that that view in, in people's mind, mainly in the island. Uh, so to do that. Um, we are trying to bring the history of most of, of these wrecks. Uh, one of them, I'm, I'm looking at it, uh, looking into the whole history of the wreck to trying to say that, look, these shipwrecks, they are important to not only for, for a sort of activity, but they have importance for everyone uh, because they were carrying, um, not only because they were carrying stuff to, to, to Mozambique or into the, the commercial trade, but there were people that were there in, in these wrecks and in, in these ships, most of them, but people that came from there, they were interacting in, in Mozambique Island and helping to build all of the, those traditions that we know today. So wrecks should be also regarded as a place of memory, um, a place of, of history where these people were, were interacting uh, together. Uh, and by bringing this, this perception, by bringing this, this idea of, of Lux, we also hope to have them included in, in, this, in this list because the island itself could not have developed if what is under, uh, underwater would, um, I mean, that the wrecks that are underwater now, that were ships before, you know, um, if they were not integrated into this, this trade. So it's something that is important to be um, to be seen and to be recognized. Well, I, I hope that through continued efforts and you know through education and, and and making people aware of the importance of the underwater heritage that it will be included at some point. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think my my last question to you is going to be is going to take somewhat of a more practical nature. Um, mm -hmm. To our students, particularly who are interested in pursuing underwater archaeology as a as a field of specialization, um, obviously you need to be a diver. You need to have your diving certificate, and yes. obviously, if you think that that laying out a grid and doing documentation above ground is difficult, I'm guessing it's even more so underwater because. <laughs> Uh, I mean, your, your diving capabilities already have to be, you know, everything has to be muscle memory and, you know, because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's your life that's on the line and now you have to do archaeology as well. <laughs> <laughs> so um, at, at what level uh, or at what level of experience do students need to become involved in, in projects if, if they want to do any kind of volunteer work? What would you, what would you recommend to them? Mm, yeah, the first thing is that you have to be a diver, and the most important is that you you are comfortable underwater. Since the moment that you are comfortable underwater, it means you can you can do all of this recording, you can do mapping, you can 
um, excavate drugs because when you're comfortable, then you build that confidence that you can do, you can do anything. So there are people that get comfortable after two dives. There are people that get comfortable after 10 dives. It's not something that I can put a number on. It depends on, uh, on people's ability of being comfortable uh, underwater. Um, so yeah, they need to have some, some experience uh, breathing under the water, which is, most of people are afraid of that, but it's after you have, uh, you have tried the first time, then you never forget it. It will be an, an amazing experience. And um, we also open to, to have people collaborating with us, even here at, at, at the university. We're starting to have some, some students involved in, in diving activities. But as we're saying, the, the first thing is that you have to feel to feel comfortable underwater. So from there, you can start doing anything that you, you have to do. Uh, mapping. Um, there are those that things that it's not possible to write underwater. But yes, you can hold a, a folder. You can write down your notes. You can draw everything there. Everything that we do on land, it's possible to do, to do underwater. As long as you're comfortable doing that, then it's perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely think that um, once this COVID uh, pandemic has left us and, and we're now open to go back to organizing uh, physical workshops for our students, um, you mm -hmm. know, we, we had our first uh, international student development workshop in 2018 where we went to Lesotho. And I think Mozambique should definitely be on the cards uh, for the near future. Hopefully, if we can, can visit your institution and if we can maybe, you know, get a few of our young aspiring uh, marine archaeologists, you know, perhaps mm -hmm. individuals who already have, you know, diving permits. Now, or maybe they're just the interesting, interested individuals who would like to stand on the coastline and, you know, offer nice cool drinks for those who come out of the sea <laughs> after a dive. Um, yeah. <laughs> that would, would definitely be uh, be something to to look forward to, and uh, we'll definitely we'll be in contact and and see if we mm. can't organize our first workshop for for the student development uh, for the student council in the in the near future. Yes, we we open to this to this experience. I mean, um, I think that for very long time, Mozambique was not very well regarded in, in this um, archaeology. I mean, I was in, in Asapa in 2019. That was in 19 years. So the experience there was, was great. I mean, because people were thinking there was nothing being done in, in Mozambique while we are trying to do a lot of things here. Mainly when we look into maritime archaeology, we have a huge coast here with a lot of things to do, a lot of wrecks, a lot of not only racks, but also uh, harbors and uh, local traditions that are related to the sea. I mean, a lot of, a lot of things that brings um, this idea of connection with the sea, people building their life with a strict connection with the sea. So to receive one of uh, the, the, the commissions here the, from the student de development, I think would be, would be a, great, a great idea. And, we can also take some some people to dive. Those who would like to. I mean, water here is warm. There is no concern about cold water. You know, it's it's fantastic. <laughs> and of course, there's a few things that you're more famous for uh, than uh, your tipo tinto, rum and raspberry, and some good king size prawns as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Uh, but Cesar, thank you so much. Um, I think that this has been a fantastic session and I think um, you might get a lot of feedback from students who you know, are interested in, in maritime archaeology. To the students tuning in, remember to do the quiz that's associated with this lecture. Uh, we like to gauge your engagement with the content, so please go and complete the quiz. And then uh, on a final note, once again, thank you Cesar. Uh, you must have a fantastic day further. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.